I feel like I made every video I ever wanted to make. In this video, I want to tell you why I feel like that and also tell you about the over 300 videos I made so far. Back in the days, I used to do weekly videos, but I have stopped doing that for quite a while now. There are two reasons for that. First, YouTube is not my job. It doesn't pay enough and thus having another job and other life problems, YouTube just got too stressful to keep up the schedule. But second reason is also that over time, I have less and less ideas what to make videos about. You see, there's only so much content you can make before you explain everything you know and videos get repetitive. And sometimes I feel like I made every video I ever wanted to make. I shared all my knowledge and experience through my six years on YouTube. If you watch all my videos, you basically know everything I know. Unfortunately, YouTube is not a great place for browsing that backlog. Most of you have not seen most of my videos, even though I have over 300. And I don't want to sound too arrogant, but I do believe that a large part of these videos are the best educational hacking content you can find anywhere. I'm very proud of most of the videos I've made and they are exactly what I wish I had when I started studying computer science. They are not sorted and structured for easy hand-holding learning, but I'm pretty confident that my videos generally go a lot deeper, cover a much wider area and are more engaging through a bit of storytelling and better editing than most other resources out there. But as I said, the problem is you have to take a bit of your own responsibility to pick out the videos that help you learn something rather than me hand-holding you through linear education. Also, generally, people watch what is recommended by the YouTube algorithm and the more casual videos tend to be the more successful ones. So maybe you missed all the nitty-gritty technical detailed videos or you subscribed years after I made them and you don't even know that those videos are there. As I have just celebrated six years on YouTube with over 300 videos and over 600,000 subscribers, I thought I would give you a bit of an overview of the topics you can actually find on my channel and also give you some advice on how I would approach my own channel if I were you. So first of all, let me guide your attention to the playlist tab on YouTube. Here you can find all videos that are part of some kind of series that might be of your interest. For example, my more popular and longer series on binary exploitation and memory corruption. While it is based on a bit of an older Linux system from Exploited Education, the basics are still super relevant. And if you work through that, you are well equipped to forge your own path going forward into this topic. There are a few more videos added to the list, including one that I always wanted to make, and that is the weird return-oriented programming tutorial. That was one of my oldest video dreams to reach, and I've done it. Anyway, what people don't get is that even though you think binary exploitation is not your main interest, if you are interested in understanding computers better, operating systems, or just want to learn assembly and reverse engineering, this series can be a vehicle to learn all these topics. Then we have the hardware security research playlist. It's a smaller series, but if you are interested in hacking embedded devices, IoT, reverse engineering, the ARM architecture, electronics, or you just want to learn more about assembly, I don't know a better resource than this. The Pwn Adventure series is a game hacking series. And what I think makes this series special is that I'm not experienced in traditional game hacking. The game hacking scene is insane and uses lots of crazy tools but I was a novice and so I just approached the game with my own ideas. So I think besides all the technical details I share, it also shows you that you can transfer knowledge, for example, from the binary exploitation playlist directly to hacking this game. In later episodes, we also then explore hacking the game on Windows so you can learn where Linux and Windows are similar or different. Related to this, I even developed my own hackable game in Unity. It was part of the Cybersecurity Challenge Germany, a CTF for students that I helped organize. Not only is this short series a quick introduction into game development, but it also talks about networking and multiplayer server development, and of course also how Unity games can be hacked. Another step up from the binary exploitation videos is the browser exploitation playlist. This series gives you a peek into modern state-of-the-art exploitation. But it doesn't mean you first have to watch the other series. You can just jump right in because even just as a JavaScript developer with little to no low-level coding experience, I think it is fascinating to see how JavaScript, in the case of WebKit, works under the hood. 
but if you are more interested in web security, then check out the web hacking playlist. It is less structured, it has some really basic introductory videos, but then it also included a few self-contained videos. For example, there are several videos with really advanced XSS topics. So if you understood the basics of XSS and CSRF, move on and look into those more crazy techniques that I showed. For example, the XSS in google.com. Or one of my favorite videos, a video about how to identify bullshit XSS tips on Twitter and what really cool XSS research looks like. Related to that is also the AngularJS security playlist. It's about an older version of Angular, but for anybody interested in JavaScript and modern JavaScript frameworks, I think this is a super interesting topic to learn about. Back in the web hacking playlist, I also added the JavaScript pop under videos in there. They represent a typical video style for my channel, where the topic is a cool, engaging story, but hidden inside you get a really technical tutorial. In this case, on JavaScript, browser bugs, analytical thinking, and how to use the browser developer tools. I think they represent the perfect tutorial style because it doesn't do the boring old school teaching. It teaches technical details and tools, but with a fun, engaging story. Anyway, of course, there are also other web topics, mostly from CTF challenges. So you can also find videos on stuff such as server-side request forgeries, other client-side attacks like CSRF, or database injections. And this leads us to the general CTF videos. Sure, they are not well organized and some of them are very hard challenges, some are easier, but it doesn't matter. I strongly believe even if you watch them and you think you don't understand every detail, you will learn about a very wide variety of topics, tools, terminologies, and so forth. And maybe in two years, you read something about hash length extension. You remember you heard a term before on a video from me, and then you can watch it again to understand better what everything is about. Another example for a video write-up I like a lot is this firmware update challenge, where the solution involved university level math of linear algebra and finite fields. So not only you learn about crypto attacks, but also about math and all of that wrapped into a CTF challenge. I really believe this is the perfect content for computer science students and could serve as a great motivation for students who struggle with why the F do I need to know this math. Again, I don't want to sound too arrogant, but inside the CTF write-up videos, I think there is a treasure trove of interesting topics. For example, I made three videos about an Ethereum smart contract challenge. And I'm not sure if you know this, but I have done Ethereum smart contract audits professionally a few years ago. I stopped because the crypto industry is dog shit, but everything I know about it, I put into those videos. And so if you are interested in Ethereum and smart contracts, here you have a very deep walkthrough, including learning about Ethereum VM internals. I don't think there's a single other YouTube video on this deep level out there. Even blog articles about this topic are sparse. Besides the CTF playlist, there's also another CTF playlist specifically from a hardware hacking CTF, RHME2. And this series contains a lot of information about Arduinos and generally embedded devices. So if you are interested in electronics, IoT, or generally hardware and lower level stuff, this is a great series. Even though I'm not an expert, this is still stuff that goes beyond your general computer science education. For example, I'm explaining and showing fault injections and AES side channel attacks, which is not something you typically find on YouTube or elsewhere. At least not for free. This is super niche educational content. And now I can also announce a series I'm starting soon. I will be covering the pseudo edit vulnerability in a series going from discovery over analyzing the bug to even developing the exploit. This is going to be very detailed and I think it's very unique educational content. So keep an eye out for that, subscribe to make sure you don't miss it. I also made a few videos about mobile security where we, for example, looked at the communication between the SIM card and the phone. It's probably not knowledge you can apply in a typical IT security work, but I think it's important to get a sense for how the IT world works, how our devices work. And that general broad understanding will lead you to do better work in other areas. I strongly believe that. I also have a few more casual videos. For example, in the My Life in Shirt stories, I used old t-shirts to talk about my career and life. So if you're interested in career advice or how a career can look like, check that one out. Unfortunately, not all my videos fit well into playlists. So there are still tons of videos that I think are very educational, but they are not easily discoverable. 
for example, a video about what are file formats, why we like to use hex numbers in IT, or reverse engineering the old Pokemon games. Yes, it's Pokemon and yes, it's a game, but the techniques and analytical approaches are the same as if it were other more important hacking. Therefore, they are another example of my teaching style, where we have a playful story, but hiding inside is very low level technical educational content. So you see, I covered a lot. Hardware, software, cryptography, low level systems and firmware, hacking high level code like Python or JavaScript, reverse engineering, exploitation, software development and more. Unfortunately, as I said, you are a bit more responsible in creating your own path. These videos do not fit well into a straight line. In my video, The Secret Step to Step Guide to Learn Hacking, I explained that it's normal and good to jump around between topics and you have to do this with my videos too. I know that there are many videos you won't understand right away and you think you shouldn't watch them, but that is not a problem. They are not a waste of your time. I'm convinced you do take something away from it, even if it's just knowing that this topic or terminology exists. You will start to develop an intuition for the stuff and when you see related topics, you will connect them. Over time, your blurry picture of everything clears up. And then you can also revisit those videos later. Also, it's super important to know what you don't know, so be happy if you do not understand the video because it means you get a chance to learn more and you have a goal that you can work towards. And of course, you can always pause a video and Google a term I used or try something out yourself or just keep watching other videos and come back in a few months to that video. I'm sure the second time you will understand more. My videos are generally not hand-holding, but they are guidance and you can use them as a reference point or starting point to venture off and explore a topic on your own. Maybe now you understand why sometimes I feel like I covered everything. And if you would explore my videos, I feel like you would really learn a lot. I know I'm not an expert in any of these fields. I don't claim that I know everything. And I understand that some people might not like my voice, prefer another presentation style, want a book or a linear path, and that is totally fine. But I'm very proud of my videos. And I'm not humble about my videos. I believe they are, as of today, one of the best educational hacking content that exists. Not just on YouTube, educational security content in general. And that makes me proud. It makes me proud that I can look at my own work and think, I spent six years on this and the result is exactly what I ever wanted when I was a computer science student. Before I end this video, I'd like to redirect you also to my website, leftoverflow.com. I recently changed the design to maybe improve the discoverability of my videos. I have this big goal to convert all my videos into written articles. I know not everybody likes videos, but I also generally think in a perfect world, there would be a text article along every video. So on here, you can very easily search for topics you're interested in and find a related video. For example, let's say you are interested in the reverse engineering tool Ghidra, simply search for it and you get a selection of videos where Ghidra is used. I think that's the perfect tutorial to learn about Ghidra because the boring tool usage is wrapped into a hopefully interesting story. Unfortunately, not all my videos have articles yet and I don't have the time to work through my whole backlog and create these write-ups. A while ago, I used to pay Pwn Function, another YouTuber, to help me with that, but he's also busy working on his own channel, making much better drawing visuals than me. So there was no progress in a long time. But recently, I started working with somebody I met through Insider PhD. I'm basically reinvesting the Patreon and YouTube membership money into paying somebody to go through my videos and create articles. I think this is the perfect use of the money. So if you want to support my future videos and contribute to the creation of these articles, check out how you can support the project Life Overflow on lifeoverflow.com support. Hopefully this overview over my channel helps you to discover all the topics you are interested in. And I hope you are the 16, 20 or 24 year old version of me who was eager to learn more and couldn't find deeply technical explanations anywhere. But you found these videos here and they open up the world of IT security and hacking to you. That would mean the world to me.